Now is a good time for us to get into making our own part with configurations. To do this, I feel it's best to start from the ground level because there are some things that can help you along the way. So first, let's create a new part using our metric template. We're gonna start a new sketch on the top plane and we're gonna insert a center point rectangle. Once you insert this, we'll go to Smart Dimension and we'll place some dimensions. First, we'll do a 200 millimeter dimension here and we're gonna rename the name of that dimension. And we're gonna call this Length. Next, we'll dimension this line, 100 millimeters. And again, we're gonna rename it. We're gonna call it Width. And then we'll exit our sketch and extrude this. Now, this dimension doesn't really matter at this point, but we're gonna go ahead and put in 50. And you'll notice that we didn't get an option to rename that dimension. In order to do that, we need to left click on the feature in the tree and where the blue dimension displays the 50 millimeter, double click it and it'll open up our modified dialog box. So we'll call this one height. So now we have three dimensions, length, width, and height that are all fully defined and fully named inside of this part. Let's go ahead and make one more feature. So on the top, let's go ahead and do a new sketch. And this time we're gonna go ahead and do another center point rectangle and we'll go ahead and drag it out. Now in this case, I'm gonna use a line tool for construction from the midpoint of this line to the midpoint of this line, and then the same thing on the side. I wanna go ahead and take these and make them equal, and then give one a dimension. We'll go ahead and do 10 millimeters, and we'll call this dimension offset. We'll escape, and we'll go ahead and do an extrude cut. And this time we're gonna go down 10 millimeters. Again, we'll select the feature, double click on the dimension, and we'll name this. And we're gonna call this dimension cut, but we also wanna go back to the feature tree and we're gonna rename this feature. And we're just gonna call it offset cut. So now we've taken care of all the dimensions by naming them something that means a little bit to us. And we've also named one feature. Let's go ahead and rebuild this. Now the names of the dimensions and the names of the feature will really come in later when we start talking about design tables. It makes a lot more sense at the design table level but it does help us here when we're talking about simple configurations. So at this point in our feature manager, we're gonna go ahead over to the configuration manager. Now inside here, you'll notice that we have the part name and it says configurations next to it. And below there, we have a default configuration. Now, every time you start a SOLIDWORKS model, whether it's a part, whether it's an assembly, it will have a configuration in here called default. You can rename this if you want, but the big thing that we wanna do here is we wanna select where it says part two configuration and right click and add a configuration. Now we can name this whatever we want, but we're gonna just go ahead and call it option two. Now there are some things that you need to be aware of down below here. Now there's some options for use in bill of materials. And what this does is it places the description in place of something like the part file name. So by default inside of a bill of materials and a detailed drawing, this thing will be called part two. If you want to have something else here, maybe something more meaningful for describing this configuration, that's where you would place it. You can also add a comment in here. You have some options for bill of materials. And then down below in the advanced options section, you have something that says suppress features. Now this is important because when you're outside of this configuration, if you go back to the default and you start adding things like additional bosses or cuts or fillets or whatever the case might be, they will be suppressed in this configuration as well. So it's an important feature that you need to make sure you're aware of. Suppressing features when you're talking about configurations can be very handy so that way you don't accidentally add features to multiple configurations. So by default, it's on and I usually leave it on unless I have a really good reason not to. So now if we go back and forth by double clicking on each of these, nothing happens. And that's because currently whenever you make a new configuration, it takes the exact copy of whatever configuration you're on, in this case default. So to change any of the properties in here, we're gonna go back to our feature manager and we're gonna do things like select the feature or select the sketches. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna right click on Boss Extrude 1 and I wanna say configure feature. Now inside here by default, it's only gonna give you a column to suppress or unsuppress. So basically this is turning a feature on or off. But if you use the drop down box next to Boss Extrude 1, it gives you an option for the dimension that's controlling it. And if you have other things in here like draft or any of the other feature properties that you can manipulate, you can see those as well. But it's important to note that the height name is the name that we gave the dimension. So it makes a lot of sense seeing this. Otherwise we would see D1 at boss extrude one and you may or may not know exactly what that is. If we check this box, now we have control over the height. So in option two, 
we're going to select this and we'll make this one 100 millimeters. And we can rebuild this and say OK. So let's go ahead and go back and forth between the configurations. It'll ask you the first time you switch back and forth to rebuild, but then you can click back and forth between them. So you'll notice that option two has a value of 100 millimeters, whereas the default has the value of 50 millimeters that we placed on it. So this is a great way that you can make multiple versions of your file by just modifying some simple dimensions. But let's take a look a little bit deeper. If we expand Boss Extrude 1 and we right click on Sketch 1, we can configure this feature as well. Again, you can suppress it, but it's a bad idea to suppress a sketch that belongs to a feature. But really what we want to do is use the drop down and select length and width. So now we have full control over the sketch dimensions and you notice that the names that we created, length and width, are applied to these boxes. So again, it makes a whole lot of sense for us to put those there because now we can easily tell what dimensions we're modifying. Of course, it is highlighted on the screen. When you select a column, you see that it moves over to that other dimension. So in this case, option two, let's say that we wanted to make option two 500 millimeters by 250. We go ahead and rebuild our file and go to option two. And you'll notice that now we have quite a big part here. So we can go option one, option two, and it gives us full control over this as well. So let's go ahead and do one last thing inside here. Right click on the offset and we'll configure that feature as well. So in option two, we're gonna suppress it, but we also want to give the option to look at the dimensions because inside option one, we might wanna manipulate this dimension a little bit more. Let's say we want it to be 15 millimeters. Say okay, we'll rebuild our file, and you'll notice that in the feature tree, offset cut is now grayed out. If we go back to default, it's still there, it's cutting a little bit deeper, and if we go back to the feature tree, you'll notice that it's not grayed out here. So this gives us complete control over any of these features, any of the dimensions, and any of the specific dimensions that we place inside of those features. We could also expand this, right click, and configure the sketch as well. We could manipulate the offset dimension, for instance, if we wanted it to be a smaller or bigger offset, we can do that and rebuild the file as well. And you see that we've now got a thin wall, or we could say, make it a bit thicker, rebuild it, and again. And this goes along with every feature. We could add fillets, we could manipulate their values, we could turn them on and off, we could add all kinds of different things and control whether or not they're used in your configuration or manipulate their values if they're easy to attain. But the big thing here I want to express to you is that if you have designs that can easily be changed, so if you have dimensions that you can modify and update and so on, it's a good idea to at least explore configurations, see if it can make your job a little bit easier. Because let's say that you had 10 different options here. If we make multiple configurations, if we just add a new configuration, so now we have configuration new two. Let's go ahead and add one more, new three. So now when we come back here and we select Boss Extrude 1 configure feature, and we expand this box a little bit, all of our configurations are here. So it gives us quick control over the dimensions and over those configurations. So let's say that in new two, this should be 150, and let's say new three, it should be 25. We'll apply that, okay. And now we can quickly go between multiple configurations, rebuild them when necessary, and you can see that now we have four options relatively quickly. If you had to go back in, and just save this file as another version, go back to the sketches and manually modify those dimensions, whether you're just selecting it here or selecting the feature, it takes a little bit more time. So this is a great option for you. And if you get to a situation where you want only a single part in the file, you can select and delete all the other configurations and only have that single configuration left. So not the cleanest way to do it, but it is a way that you can make a file that has dozens and dozens, even hundreds of configurations and then pick the one you want, save it out with all the other configurations deleted. Then you have a single file and you don't have to worry about all these references on the back end.